Welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework tutorial series. This is tutorial one, build your first SharePoint client-side web part, aka Hello World part one. This is the January 2020 edition uh, and using SharePoint Framework 1.10. So if you're using a newer version of SharePoint Framework, please uh, follow up on the written uh, guidance and written documentation uh, related on the tutorial to make sure that if there's any adjustments based on the version which you're using, comparing the, the video. So the documentation is always up to date. Videos don't necessarily get updated on every single release of SharePoint Framework. This is the tutorial one, and like mentioned, we're going to build our first SharePoint client side web part. We want uh, we, you want to make sure that uh, you have followed up on our setup development environments guidance. So you're, you have a tenant, and you have installed the Node.js npm yaml generator and Culp and uh, the SharePoint framework yaml generator packages to your machine where you are using this or where you're following up on the tutorial. And in here, we're going to actually build a first solution and we're going to test it out in the local workbench. So we're not going to actually go to the Office 365 tenant with this tutorial, but we're going to continue building the exact same solution within tutorial two, three, and four. Uh, so this is the kind of a step number one on getting started by creating your first solutions with SharePoint Framework. So in our case, we're going to use a Windows 10 machine uh, where I have the existing uh, tenant, uh, which we already uh, prepared for the development uh, within the previous tutorials. But we're not going to actually have, uh, we don't, well, we don't need to use the actual tenant within tutorial one, and we're going to use it in tutorial three, actually, or tutorial two. But uh, let's start going through the tutorial one. So hello world part one. So first of all, uh, we need to go uh, to a location where you want to actually create your solution structure. Uh, typically, you would actually create something like MD code, uh, CD code. Uh, so let's actually go to that code folder. Um, and it's an empty folder. Um, and in this case, we can then do MD hello world. And uh, web part uh, is the one which we're actually creating. And let's actually go there as well. So now we're in the web parts uh, folder in the C uh, code uh, folder structure. And again, it doesn't really matter where you're actually putting the code. Uh, if you prefer to put your code in a slightly different folder structure, uh, you can absolutely do that as well. So uh, all of our prerequisites have been globally installed. So they work in uh, any uh, folder structure in your machine. So, and in here, we're going to then execute the Yo Microsoft SharePoint, uh, which actually starts uh, the Yeoman generator for SharePoint framework. And it is then guiding us through uh, the creation of the solution by using the questions uh, in the Yeoman flow. And the, the speed of execution uh, and everything else is highly dependent, obviously, on the machine which you're using and also what kind of up potential updates there might be behind of the scenes. Now, let's follow up on the tutorial on the written format. So and we're requested to actually use the default entry uh, as the solution name. Uh, really important selection here. Uh, you can actually target your solution on 2016 onwards, including SharePoint Online or 2019 onwards uh, or SharePoint Online. So in our case, we're going to use always the, the latest and greatest in this tutorial, which is the SharePoint Online. So the best and most up-to-date uh, experiences and development experiences is always on the cloud. So let's target SharePoint Online. We're going to use the current folder, uh, so we're already at uh, the Hello World web part folder, so we don't need to actually create a subfolder for the solution. And the following questions are also interesting. So first of all, uh, do you want to allow the tenant admin choice of being able to deploy the solution to all sites um, um, immediately running, uh, which would be then running all of the features. So let's slightly adjust that one. So um, you can actually see the full question. There we go. So this basically means that is the web part immediately available across the whole tenant when you're deploying the solution to the app catalog? And in our case, in this case, we can actually say no. So we can actually deploy this web part one by one to a site. Quite often, typically though, uh, you want to have the web part available across the tenant. Uh, so the, quite often you would actually answer yes in this if your web part is kind of a generic web part providing different capabilities. The next question is also interesting. This is really around the fact that is the solution uh, containing a craft or web API permissions, which might be interesting. And we're going to do that later on in the tutorials. But in the basic tutorial, there is no requirements uh, for that kind of things. So we don't actually have to spend too much time on that question uh, for now. But it basically gives us a, a solution specific isolation of the permissions if needed. 
The next question is also interesting. So do we actually want to uh, create uh, a web part extension or library? And in this case, we are creating our first solution, which was requested to be a web part. So let's choose the web part. And then uh, we need to provide the web part name. So let's call it Hello World like in our documentation and the hello world description is the default entry that's fine for now and then a really interesting question a set of questions no javascript framework react or knockout uh, one thing to notice here uh, as part of the sharepoint framework 1.10 release we are deprecating the knockout template here and uh, it doesn't mean that knockout would not be supported it means that the default templating is not available for Knockout. You can still use Knockout in the future as well, or any other JavaScript framework. These are just default template structures created for a specific framework. In our case, we're going to use the no JavaScript framework, and then you could actually include Vue.js, Angular, React, Knockout, or whatever, to this selection as well after the solution has been created. Now, when I select this one, uh, it's going to actually start the scaffolding process. Uh, you can see the basic files being now created on the file, on the file system. And then what actually happens is that the actual uh, dependencies from the node, uh, from the NPM, is getting installed on the machine. And this might actually take a while. So there might be a few minutes here and there, again, depending on the environment, how long this takes. So we're going to speed up the video until uh, the creation of the solution is fully completed. And there we go. Now our solution structure has been completed uh, and we're able to actually see um, uh, or start the Visual Studio Code and actually think uh, and see how the structure uh, Sakura has been created. And the easiest way to actually do that uh, is simply by uh, creating or calling code uh, plus. But before we actually do that, let's uh, first have a look on uh, the basic structures um, and how the basic scaffolding creates us the local workbench as well. First of all, one thing to notice, uh, we did do this actually in the pre-environment uh, setup. Uh, so you need to do once in an environment gulp trust uh, dev cert. You can do that one more time or multiple times. So let's actually execute that one inside of an existing solution. So this one will make sure that the local host can be served uh, through HTTPS. And there we go. So that has been actually executed properly. And now if we do call observe, we can actually see a browser getting started, um, serving the pre default web part from the local workbench. And again, the dev certificate uh, was required to be executed. Uh, so we get uh, the HTTPS to be working with the local host. And if you haven't done that, then the local host with HTTPS does not work properly. And the note, uh, maybe one thing to notice here, uh, we can actually see this uh, side by side. Uh, so if we put actually and the requests in here, and if I extend uh, the form, we can actually see our Hello World web part being available in a local workbench. And a local workbench basically gives you the capability of previewing how the web part look without even having uh, online connectivity. So without actually having connectivity on the SharePoint Online. So I can actually select the web part and we can actually see the, re see the requests and handling on the other side as well, uh, how, how things are actually working. But basically the default scaffolding uh, is a quite simple structure. Uh, which is providing us a description field and you can see the description field getting updated on the on the field automatically so there is a reactive way of updating the property directly on the on the web part as well so you don't have to explicitly apply the change to get reflected on the web part now <clears throat> Let's actually have a look on uh, the basic structure of things. So let's let's go back on uh, the, the uh, uh, command line and let's go control uh, C. So we're going to terminate things. I'm going to clear up the page and then I'm going to do code and dots. And this is going to start the Visual Studio code uh, in that folder. So this way we can actually see what kind of structures were actually created as part of the solution. So what are the different file systems and folders and, and all of that stuff which are available as part of the default scaffolding. Now, depending on your environment, again, the rendering of the left menu might be looking slightly different or the files, uh, again, slightly different if you're using a different uh, code uh, code. Uh, 
editor, then the Visual Studio code as well. Now, there are a few key files here and key folders. The config is really for there, uh, the configure, uh, your solution level uh, settings, and also, for example, debugging settings and, and uh, packaging settings. So as an example, if you go on the package solution, we're not going to modify these things right now, but you can actually control other, other assets being packaged inside of your solution package, which is by default the best option. Um, so you don't actually have to serve your, the, the assets from a CDN, and, and that's by default uh, true as well. And you, we can also see different settings here, depending, which are basically instructing, for example, the local workbench behavior, or if we are deploying something to the Azure side of the house, how that works or how we are debugging things as well. So really kind of a controlling the packaging and debugging uh, and, and, and the behavior of the, of the solution. Now, what's the most interesting part, uh, so to say, in here is the source file in, in the source folder. Uh, source folders, if we extend the web parts, we can actually see the Hello World web part in here. And in the Hello World web part, we can then see the individual files. So we can actually see that we have an interface here, uh, which is the I Hello World web parts props, and it has the description property. And the web part is using that one. It's, it's inherited from the base client web part, which is actually coming from the web part base. So we can actually see all of these dependencies in here. And if you're interested on, on any of the details related on that one, uh, we can absolutely Absolutely, you can have a look on the on the definitions, and you can have a look on more detailed uh, on the baseline of the structures and what are the properties and all of that stuff, uh, which uh, from the base components as well. And that's the beauty of the TypeScript. So the advantage of using TypeScript uh, as the development experience. So you have all of that additional intelligence and dependencies and and intelligence uh, when you are developing stuff. Now, the actual output of the web part is being rendered here. Uh, we can actually slightly modify this one. Uh, it is not quite optimal in the 1.10 release. Unfortunately, there was a small uh, bug related on uh, the rendering logic. So I'm going to actually slightly, slightly adjust them uh, like it will be in the later versions. So basically, this is uh, the output information, which we are seeing also in the, uh, in the local workbench. So we can say hello, welcome SharePoint, customizing SharePoint experiences using web parts and hello there. That's the property. And we can actually see that one, welcome SharePoint, customizing SharePoint experiences and all of that available in here. So uh, slightly adjusting that one still making it more pretty, making it more easy, easily understandable how the HTML structure is being rendered. So the default entry is quite simple. As you can see, uh, we are just outputting an HTML structure, HTML plop, um, and then we're outputting the properties to description entry in here. What's really, again, interesting or important to understand, we're using TypeScript, which gives us then the intelligence. So when we're writing something like uh, this uh, dot uh, properties or whatever, we can actually see all of the different properties properties which are available and, and it reduces the possibility of exceptions or mistakes and typos when you're writing the code, which is much more easily, which can happen much more easily when you're writing a typical JavaScript. Now, let's actually slightly adjust uh, the settings. Uh, one thing to notice here, um, here we have the, the get property bank configuration option, and this is basically setting up the property bank configuration. So the top right, top section, sorry, right section, uh, where we configure the web part. So we can slightly, let's actually modify this one slightly. Let's include a few additional controls and few different properties on the property pane section. So we can actually test out what are the other options available uh, in here as well. So let's actually do this and do property pane, uh, property pane checkbox. So the uh, reusable controls, which is property checkbox and property pane drop uh, down and then uh, property pane uh, toggle uh, is the one which we're using. You can see multiple different settings here, and these are basically reusable components or controls for your solution. So let's save that one. Now, we need to have a few properties more, so we can actually test out things. Uh, so let's actually do that as well. So let's add a few additional properties to our interface. Uh, so we have a string property, boolean property, string, and a boolean property. So we can test out those additional controls. Then let's also modify our uh, property pane configuration settings. And in here, we can see that there's the property pane description over there, there's the groups. So we actually need to have additional controls in here. 
And underneath uh, that label, the description uh, field, let's actually uh, modify or add additional controls there as well. So let's actually have a look on where, oh, all the way to there. We're gonna actually add a few additional settings. And there we go. Uh, so what we're doing here uh, is we're adding a test field um, and we're mapping the test field then to this test property in here and test one, two, and three. And if we go back, we can see a, a editors for one, two, and three. And they're basically matching then the type as well. So obviously the test tree is for example, a, a Boolean property. Test uh, two is a string property. So we're able to store that right information uh, because we are the actual value of that one is, is well, in this case, it's actually two, three, four, which we're storing there. Now, we still need to do a small more additional settings. So these are basically the properties in the interface level, but nowhere yet we are actually defining uh, what those properties are in the metadata level. So let's actually open up the web part metadata file in here. And in here, we actually have the details around the web part. So we could modify, for example, the title or a description or the, the icon which is visible when you select the web part from the web part picker. So that's actually the, the Office UI Fabric icon uh, entry over there. So what we actually want to do here is that we want to add a few additional properties on the description. And there we go. Oop, let's actually get clear that one. And there we go. Just going to uh, intent that properly in a nice way. So we're adding here a default property entry. So in this case, whenever the web part is being added on the page, uh, the test has a default value of multiple and text field. The test one has a default value of true. Test two has a default value of two. And test three has a default value of true. So this way, there's a default entry when the web part is being used, even though it has not been necessarily configured. Now, let's save all of the changes. Uh, remember to do control S or save from the files uh, or and, and then we are able to do the gallop serve again. So we wanna actually test out what are the changes uh, on the experience in that web part or in this case in the property pane now that we are serving things up. So let's refresh the rendering and let's refresh the local workbench from a local host. We can see the hello world available there. Let's add that one on a page. We can see the hello world over there as well. Let's actually modify and the entries. We can actually see now a multiple additional uh, properties, Oop, a multiple additional properties on the right side over here with the default entries like they're defined in the manifest file as well. So the drop down being to the being on and there was a multi-line text set up there as well. So quite simple. Uh, to modify the experience, quite simple to actually change the experience as well. And, and you can definitely take advantage of this property bank controls. You can actually build your own custom property bank controls and there are open source community property bank controls already available, which you can use to further enhance uh, the, the configuration experience. But that's it for the uh, actual experience and actual tutorial number one. So this was a web, uh, Hello World uh, part one. And in the next phase, we will actually start uh, using the SharePoint REST APIs together with uh, this web part to get some information from the SharePoint online or from the environment or from the SharePoint site where the web part is being hosted. But that's it for the, this particular tutorial. Mm -hmm.